Hey YouTube family, it's Be Righteous back with episode 2 of my thoughts. I want to expound on a subject that has very much controversy tied to it, I must say. From the thumbnail, I'm sure you already know what it is. Hazard protection, and whether or not it should be nerfed. Tell me down in the comments if you feel as though they should even touch it, or if so, how would you go about nerfing it? Now, as I said, <laughs> this is a very controversial subject, and rightly so. Both sides have their reasons why they agree or disagree, and both have valid rationale to justify their beliefs. Trust me, y'all. I know how you feel because, me personally, I use builds on both sides of the spectrum, and I know where the frustrations lie. The 100% hazard protection users feel like the ability to spam skills on a 10 second cooldown while dealing crazy damage without even firing your weapon is super cheesy and requires zero skill now i could definitely understand that but on the other hand you got players who aren't as good with weapons as you are so they use skills to get an advantage or they just prefer skills more they just want to use skill builds nothing wrong with that and they're thinking well if you're gonna use berserk clutch on me and you think i'm gonna just sit here and take it well nah i'm gonna use bleed i'm gonna use burn whatever skill they decide because in their mind there's no other alternative i sympathize with you both because something has to be done about this and i do believe there's a solution i personally feel like <laughs> hazard protection should be nerfed but before you start going in on me in the comment section hear me out i do think hazard protection should be nerfed but only if skill spamming is nerfed or for example, the Jammer Pulse combined with Sorya's exotic knee pads should be able to have a 10 second cooldown as well as the skills to compensate for when they spam. The ability to have a 10 second cooldown on a Seeker Mind that hits for a quarter of a million damage is too much. So there has to be a happy medium to make both parties content. That's why, from what I've heard, they aren't even going to nerf hazard protection but instead alter the functionality of how it works by first changing its name to something called EDR. For those of you who don't know or, or aren't familiar with that, EDR means exotic damage resilience, something that is reminiscent of the Division 1. The fact that the devs are calling it that is just reassuring me even more by hinting that this rework is going towards the direction of Division 1. Frederick Thylander once again responded to a tweet regarding this. Someone stated, it's just a problem. Hazard protection is what everyone specs into because you can be immune to everything. But if hazard protection worked like EDR, it wouldn't be the go-to stat in knowing that it's easy to hit 100%. Frederick responded by saying, hazard protection is literally EDR renamed. I know because I renamed it myself, but you can't get 100% hazard protection after the rework and you're sacrificing important stats to get it. So this is great news because when hazard protection was exotic damage resilience before, and if you specced into it, then you weren't some jack of all trades agent that could do anything. This revert back to how it used to be will be the start of something beautiful that we've all been missing from the beginning of this game. Roles. Let me give you an example. There was a gear set called Final Measure, which with a two piece gave you 15% exotic damage resilience. And if you built around that, it forced you to sacrifice other attributes to envelop that role, which also made you a valuable asset because Final Measure was a great addition to any squad. One thing that it did was absorb grenades that enemies threw at you and it made it yours. So this did a lot of things. It stopped enemies from rushing. It stopped teams from being so aggressive. It just made it more balanced just for that one role. And that's just one example. So if we can get it back to that type of play style, this game will be on another level, man. Anyway, I believe that if something like this is implemented, what Division 2 was meant to be will come into fruition. The revamp Massive is talking about is crazy. I have no idea how how it's all going to affect talents, skills, gameplay. I have no idea. We're going to find out in this state of the game because Frederick's going to be on. He said he's going to lay it down. He said he's about to come with it. So everybody's expecting to see something from Frederick. You know, he got to bring it. He has to bring it. And I'm just really excited and optimistic. So I hope that it's for the better. I mean, the state of division now is terrible. But for those of you who are diehards like me and have been here from the beginning, whether it was 
from the beginning of Division 1 or 2. It doesn't matter. We're going to stay optimistic. Because when this game was first announced way back in 2015, it was the first of its kind. And there's no game like it. So for this game's potential to be wasted is not an option. The devs know that. And it's why there's been so many reworks. I do believe, though, that Title Update 7 is one of Mass's last chances to make it right. Because the player base's patience is wearing thin. A lot of players have already quit. So let's hope for the best in this upcoming patch and just the future of the game in general. That's it for this episode of Righteous Thoughts. Tell me how you feel about it in the comments. I'd really love to know. And I'll see you in the next episode. Be right out.